What's up guys, this is Foadin or FoTK and this tutorial is going to cover Turbulence FD which is a separate plugin that can be used for Cinema 4D um, and it's basically fire or smoke simulation and it's basically going to run you through how to make it um, and show you how to enhance it in After Effects as well. So first of all, you can get it off YouTube really easily um, so if you want to go and check that out, lots of links, that's all good. Um, once you've downloaded it and installed it, you need to just come up to Plugins, go to Turbulence FD and create a container. Um, anything, any simulation what you want uh, will be within this container. So Turbulence FD will not work outside of this. So it's, obviously, it's like a workspace really. So you just want to size it up, do whatever you want, get it into the right place you want. Obviously the larger you go, as you can see here is max memory used. That shows your, um, and let me lock that, there we go. Um, as I make it bigger, it uses more memory, more PC or CPU. So obviously the larger you go, the more it will take to render and whatnot. So depending on your PC, um, you'll have to do that accordingly. So there we go, we've got our container. Then what we need to do is we need to create an object for the fire to emit from. Usually a sphere will do. Um, and you can just size that down something about there and near the bottom. Yeah, get there we go, it looks alright. And the first thing we need to do is make this interactive with our container. So we come up to sorry, but about to belt them. So we come up to our sphere, you right click and you go to turbulence FD and you go into the emitter tag. So that basically tells Cinema 4D this is the emitting object. Um, and then what we want to do is once we got that selected, you want to come down to here onto the actual tag. Oh, I've locked it, haven't I? Uh, click on tag. And then you've got all these settings. So temperature and density. So temperature is the fire and density is the smoke. So basically just put those to one. Not kind of means off, one means on um, in my eyes. So I'll do that because obviously with uh, fire comes smoke. And once that's all done, that's all good. If you wanted to have fire collide against something, if you had a wall, then you'd create a new tag for the wall. If I just do it quickly. There we go. If I do that, and I'll, I'll leave it there actually, just so you can, sh you can so you can see, I've got a wall, um, and I want to make the fire, you know, not pass through the wall. So you go into Turbulence FD Emitter and just check Collision Object. Don't worry about all the temperature and density. You just tell in Cinema 4D it is a collision object for Turbulence FD. So now we've got that all sorted. We can come to our Turbulence FD container. Make sure you click on it, and then go up to the plugins. Uh, Turbulence FD and click start simulation and that's going to start our fire and as you can see it looks like a mushroom you know it looks kind of crap um, so you know we need to enhance it and the first thing I'll do is I'll come click on the container make sure the container tab is selected and bring the voxel size to about five um, the lower you go the more detailed it is but so far all we need to is the you know the correct simulation you know the way it looks we don't need to start rendering it and seeing if it you know if the textures and that work well we just want the simulation to look good or how we want it so I always come down and cache velocity and as you can see here simulation cache really easy I'll just go to browse select desktop and then click new um, and it's always good to do this because um, well I don't know it just helps um, <laughs> I'm still not a pro in this thing but yeah I'll always save the caches and so you just go to browse, choose desktop, and then just click new. Um, and that's the container tab done. We can now come over to the simulation uh, where we will need, oh, it's already open for me actually. We need density, temperature, vorticity, and wind. So for the wind, I'm going to blow the fire onto the wall. Uh, obviously, the wall should do its job and stop the fire. So I need to do that about there. So about three in that direction. That's axis X, Y, and Z. Uh, Z being the blue, so that's all good. And wind speed, I'll go to 50 centimeters. Uh, give that a quick simulation. Nope, not good enough. We'll double that because we want it to hit the wall. And now we'll, we'll just double that again. We'll make it really strong wind. Oh god, no! 150. There we go. We'll, we'll break even on that one. There we go, that looks alright. And as you can see, it's now passing over the wall, which is very nice. So now we've got our wind zone, we can close that. Uh, vorticity, this is basically 
instead of making it look like a mushroom shape, you know, that and the turbulence um, make it more fire-like, uh, as you'll see in a minute. I'll turn the vorticity to 10 and the turbulence to 20. So now if you look at this, and then I start a new simulation, it looks more fire-like. As you can see, there's more hitting the wall, it's more separated, you know, it looks, looks a lot nicer, and when it comes to more detail, it'll look a lot better as well. Um, so that's that done. The temperature, which is fire, you know, obviously you come up to the tags, you've got fire, which is temperature, and then density, which is smoke. So the, temp uh, the temperature will put cooling to 3%. Uh, the cooling is how long you want your fire to last. Um, obviously, fire doesn't constantly stay, it emits and then fades, so that's basically what you can control here. Um, I think we'll leave, okay, buoyancy will bring down to 1,000. And then the density will activate the smoke and bring a, I don't know, container threshold of 50. Um, and then we won't worry about anything else for now. That's our simulation done. So if we click start, basically all these settings will affect this simulation here. The way it looks will come onto, will be coming onto the rendering tab. So that looks all right. So if I render that now, you can see, whoa, it's kind of crap, you know. Um, and that's mainly because of the vorticity. And as you can see here, look, there's like a box. You know, it's being boxed off, and that's because the, it's hitting the container. And uh, so obviously you need to make your, either your sphere really small or your container rather large, but be aware of your CPU as well. So then what we can do is we can go to Passport Preview, make sure channel is set to temperature, and that's all that needs to be done. Rendering, we'll start with the fire shader. So fire, obviously make sure it's temperature, temperature, fire. That's just something you're going to need to remember. Um, everything's fine until the color, which you can bring the low temperature to about 500 and the high temperature to 2000. Uh, and then maybe 80% red and 60% oops, 60 green. There we go. And I think that's all done. Yep. So that's the fire shader done. The smoke shader. Um, channel. We need to set it to density because density is smoke. Um, and I'll leave that as it is right now. So that's enabled all of it. So if I now start the simulation again, this will have both smoke and fire. So let's just stop that there and render. So that's nice. Uh, you've got the smoke here. You can clearly see you've got the fire. Uh, but we need, you know, once you've got your simulation and you, it looks all right, something similar to this, you think, yeah, that's all good because obviously you're going to be enhancing it in After Effects as well. Um, what you can do is you can come to Turbulence FD, go to Container and bring your voxel size down. Now I usually go in mine to about 0.8 um, and I'll give that a simulation and it will take a lot longer um, as you are probably seeing now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this video and I'm going to come back to it once it's all done. Right guys, so I'm back and it's all rendered nicely. As you can see, it's a lot more detail. So if I just click, give this a quick pre-render, uh, it'll take a few seconds. There we go. So that's that's more like fire, isn't it? And then you've got your smoke as well. Um, and obviously, you, if you wanted to make various more adjustments, you can. This is only tutorial based, so it's not going to be um, to your specifications. So there we go. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to shove that in the center. Maybe rotate it a bit. And I'm going to just render that out as a PNG file. Uh, Alfred as well. And I'll just save it on the desktop as that. And current frame. Yep, yep, yep. Don't worry about the pixel size and whatnot. Just want it rendered. And there we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come out of all of this. Now we've got our picture. Um, I've already got After Effects open, so drag and drop. So there we go. Oh, sorry, there we are. We got our fire, and then what I usually do is I make various adjustments. Um, color correction. I go to color curves, and I'll also go to a bit of hue and saturation. Um, first of all, what I'll do is I'll get the brighten the the video up or frame, whatever, up just slightly. And then come down here and bring the contrast in a bit more. 
And once I'm happy with the way that looks, I'll come to the saturation and bring that down slightly. Ever so slightly though. Now depending on what background it's on, it's obviously going to be different. Um, I've just sort of, it didn't really help help me because I had just an Alfred image and then a wall. If you're in a scene, it will look a lot better. If you have light in as well, you can even put little glows, uh, like lights uh, within Cinema 4D in order to shine orange onto the uh, onto the wall. That would make it a bit more realistic and might blend in well. Um, you know, that's what I'd do. So if I just turn both of these off, that's what we originally have and then that's what it looks like now. Um, so you sort of, obviously you can play around and get it to the way you want it to, and that's how you do it, guys. Uh, so it's a nice, it's relatively simple once you get used to it, uh, get playing around. Um, you know, then you'll be able to do whatever stuff you want because you'll understand the program. So uh, there we go, guys. Please like and comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.